Yo, what is up guys? It's Pedro here and in today's video I will be talking about why I think the Washington football team needs to go get another wide receiver this offseason to pair alongside Terry McLaurin whether it be in the draft or in free agency the Washington football team clearly needs another receiver so we're going to be talking about that in today's video so if you guys are new make sure to subscribe for Washington and NFL content hit that like button and turn on those notifications it really really helps out the channel a lot and also go ahead and follow my Twitter I'm trying to get to 1,000 followers over there and check out WinView. let's get right into the video Going into last offseason, I think a lot of us agreed that wide receiver was one of our biggest needs and we went out and, you know, signed Curtis Samuel to a pretty big deal and drafted Deion Brown in the third round, signed Adam Humphreys, got Dax Milne and a couple others, you know, DeAndre Carter. And we felt pretty good about the position going into the season, or at least a lot better than we did in the past. But a lot of the players besides Terry McLaurin have flopped this year. I mean, Curtis Samuel, part of it is injury, but part of it, you know, even when he's on the field, he wasn't great this whole year, you know, since the end of May, early June with that groin injury, knocking him out for most of the season. And, you know, the first game he did come back in that Falcons game, he was very limited, but he actually looked good. You saw what he did for the offense. You know, I think he had four catches and all those those four catches were for first downs and it was only on 20 plays and he also opened things up for Terry McLaurin but then he re-aggravated it and then when he came back a couple weeks ago I can't remember when it when he came back but he was not very good and you know wasn't getting that open you know we weren't scheming him up that much and you know sometimes when he wasn't even when he was open we just weren't getting him the ball so um it's just been really a wash of a year for Curtis Samuel. It's unfortunate because, again, it's not all his fault. The groin injury is a freak injury, and it really messed up his rhythm and everything this season. So I'm going to be interested to see what he looks like next year if he is healthy. But again, we can't bank on these things. And then Deami Brown, we drafted him in the third round, and I had, you know, somewhat high expectations. I didn't have, you know, as high of expectations as some people did. Some people thought he was going to be a star. I thought he was going to go out there, you know, get like 400-ish yards this year. But he hasn't, you know, got anything close to that um, this year. He's been really, really disappointing so far this year. You know, some of it is health issues, but a lot less than Curtis Samuel. Uh, early on, they were, you know, trying to get him involved, but then, you know, he just wasn't doing much with those touches. I think he had a drop or two, one against the Bills and another drop in another game. He slipped down, a, you know, I think last, not this past game, but against the Cowboys. Um, and it's just, he hasn't done much with those touches, and he's been, you know, so bad that they've, you know, relegating him to gunner right now. Um, you know, it's so early, especially with Deami Brown. It's his first year, so he has so much time to grow, but it's just been really disappointing thus far with Deami Brown in his rookie year. And, you know, there's been times, like, early on, he was open. Like, he could have gotten, like, a 50, you know, 60-yard touchdown, but the quarterback doesn't get him the ball, whoever it was. I think it was Fitzpatrick. No, it was uh, Heineke then in that Bills game, but it doesn't matter. Deami Brown has been, you know, underwhelming this year, and you can't bank on him balling out next year for us when you're, you know, talking about your wide receiver plans. Like, you cannot bank on him being a wide receiver three for you, a wide receiver two for you, because he hasn't really shown anything yet in the NFL for you. At least Curtis Samuel has shown some things before he got hurt. With Carolina, he had over a thousand yards from scrimmage last season so you know what he can do if he's healthy I think Curtis Samuel can be a solid option in an offense but I do still think we need another receiver in this offense it's really really sad to see you know Terry McLaurin he's not and it's not his fault but like his stats are so much lower than some of these other receivers and if he had their quarterbacks or you know the other receivers around them he would just have so many more yards than they have. I think he has like 870 yards right now or something like that. And a lot of that has to do with the quarterback play. You know, Heineke has helped him at times, but sometimes he underthrows it, just doesn't see it. And it's just really unfortunate. I mean, he played the whole game last week with Garrett Gilbert and got four targets, but it, it should, that's not enough. And, you know, two of those he couldn't have gotten because it was thrown late and it was, you know, good coverage 
as well. But, you know, Terry McLaurin, he has not played with good receivers. You look at his rookie year, he was the best receiver by far. I mean, he had Steven Sims there at, you know, second half of the season. Kelvin Harmon there as well. <clears throat> and then last year, forget about it. I mean, Dontrell Inman, um, Antonio Gandy golden you have, or for a little bit. Cam Sims was actually solid the second half of the year. And then this year, it's, I mean, it's Terry McLaurin. Adam Humphreys, you know, Dax Milne, DeAndre Carter, those kind of guys, um, and Cam Sims a little bit, but he just doesn't have a great receiving course. So, you know, the opposing offenses can, you know, just put more attention on him so that, you know, we have to try to force, you know, our targets elsewhere. And that's just unfortunate for Terry McLaurin. So I think, you know, that's what we wanted in Curtis Samuel, someone that could take away the atten attention from Terry McLaurin. But I still think, we could go after another receiver this year, whether it's free agency or the draft. I do think we need to go after another receiver, another proven receiver. We're in a really good cap situation. I do think we do need to try to re-sign our own guys. Like We obviously need to try to re-sign Tara McLaurin, and we have a lot of free agents. We have a lot of free agents that we could go you know, on our own team, like you know, Brandon Sheriff, I'm not a big fan of re-signing him, but like J.D. McKissick, some other guys as well that we could go ahead and re-sign. Um, so I think, you know, re-signing our, <clears throat> our guys that are on our team are important. But after that, I think, you know, signing a receiver is a good option. And there's actually this class is a very, very good wide receiver class, um, this free agency. You look at the top names, Devontae Adams, Chris Godwin, Mike Williams, Christian Kirk, um, you know, AJ Green, but he's pretty old. Jacoby Myers is an option. Emmanuel Sanders. You got Allen Robinson is an option. Um, Jamison Crowder, Antonio Brown. There's a lot of <clears throat> big names out there. Adam Humphreys. Um, and, you know, real quick, let me talk about the receiving core. You know, it, I think our receiving core has been improved um, over last year. I mean, it's hard to be worse than it was last year. Um, Adam Humphreys has been solid for us. Nothing special, but he's made some big catches for us over the course of the season. I mean, it seems like every game he makes one or two big clutch catches, you know, a third down conversion or just a big catch. So he's been good for us. But again, he's not someone you want to depend on. And he's a good rotational piece. Same thing with Cam Sams. It's disappointing. They're not really using him that much because he has made some big plays this year. I hope next year, if he is back, I hope that they can, you know, they use him more on the offense because I think obviously you don't want him as a wide receiver too on your team, but he's a really good rotational receiver. He's got good hands and, you know, he can do some things after the catch. So he's a good option to have, but I don't think besides Terry McLaurin, you don't really have a long-term option. Curtis Samuel, I think is good, but you know, I think he's only under contract for two more years and you don't know if he's going to be able to stay healthy, but I like what Curtis Samuel can, you know, his potential, what he can bring to this offense. It's just, can he stay healthy? So some of the options in free agency are just really, really good. Devontae Adams, I mean, he's going to be 29 years old next year, but I mean, he's just amazing. And that's a dream because he's want to, he's going to want to come to a place where he can get a quarterback. So he's really off the table, but if we can somehow get a big name quarterback here, you know, Derek Carr, Aaron Rodgers, I'm just kidding. It's going to be really hard, really, really hard to get Aaron Rodgers. I think he's going to stay in Green Bay. But if you can get a big name quarterback or at least a competent quarterback, I think Devontae Adams would consider leaving. Another option, Chris Godwin just tore his ACL, so it might be a little bit tougher. But he would be another option right there. He has struggled with drops, but he consistently puts, you know, over a thousand yards um, per season. Mike Williams, he is another option where I think he will be cheaper. Not going to be super cheap, but he will be much cheaper. And, you know, 27 years old, has about 964 yards this year, seven touchdowns, a little bit injury prone. And he's up and down. He had a huge, you know, really fast start to the season, but a little bit disappointed in the last few weeks. So he might be someone you're like, man, maybe we don't want him just because he started off super fast and it's kind of ending slow, but he's still a good 
option. He has a lot of potential. Seven touchdowns, uh, 964 yards this year. I like also another option. Christian Kirk from the Cardinals, he's younger. You're, he's definitely going to be much te- cheaper. And he's not a guy that, you know, has super, super potential. But he's on pace for close to 1,000 yards this season. And he's going to be that guy, you know, 750 to 1,100 yards. And you can get him for somewhat cheap. And he can open some things up for Terry McLaurin and some other. So those are kind of the big name options in free agency. And there's always the draft. I mean, I'm not a huge fan of drafting a receiver in the first round. But if you know, if you maybe let's say you don't, there's not a quarterback you really like, maybe you got one in free in free agency or a trade. And maybe you trade back in the first round and get someone like Garrett Wilson. Um, there's I've I'm blanking on the name, Jamison Williams, I think from Alabama, Chris Olave, any of those guys, great route runners. And those guys would add a lot to this offense and, you know, would really open things up for Terry McLaurin. And if we do end up getting a rookie quarterback, you want to set him up with a good receiving core. Because on offense, honestly, our bit, you know, two biggest holes are quarterback and receiver. I think Heineke can be a bridge quarterback, but I don't see you know much more than that. So you have a good offensive line, maybe add some depth there. You got good tight ends. If Logan Thomas is back, I love John Bates. Your running backs could use some tooling, but if you bring back McKissick, maybe uh, draft a guy in the mid rounds, I think you'll be fine there. So receiver is really where you want to go after. So you could, you know, Draft one if you want in the first round, but pref- you know, pref- preferably the second or third round, or you can go after another one in free agency. Because I don't want to go into this season with the same, you know, relative. Because obviously it's going to be a little bit different because if you know we're going to lose some guys, but I don't want to go into this season, you know, with our receiving core as Terry McLaurin, Curtis Samuel, Deami Brown, and Dax Milne, and you know, some random guy. I want it to be like, let's say, Terry McLaurin, Curtis Samuel, and the next guy either be, uh, you know, first to second, maybe third round pick, or one of these kind of top five guys. You know, Allen Robinson, I know he had a down year this year, not sure why, but before that, consistently over 1,000 yard seasons. What does he have this year? Um, 518 yards, I believe. Is that what it? No, it's, let's see, I'm trying to see. He do, He's not, he has not had a great season part of it has been yeah 350 wow um part of it's been injuries but part of it he just hasn't been good but you might be able to get him for a really discounted price and he's been pretty quarterback proof so i think Allen robinson could be an option where you might be able to get him on a huge huge discount and just take flyer on him take a flyer on him and if it doesn't work out well it sucks, but you got him for a lot cheaper. And, you know, Curtis Samuel, it's still a good option, but I just think we should get some insurance, get another guy in there that at least can do some things if he does go down. Because this year, we didn't have that guy. We have Terry McLaurin. And, I mean, Adam Humphreys is close to that, but he's not on the same level as someone like Christian Kirk or Emmanuel Sanders, Russell Gage, some of those, you know, veteran guys that you can bring in. So that's just me. I want to hear from you guys what you think about, you know, potentially going after a big name receiver um, or someone in the draft to pair alongside Terry McLaurin to open things up for him and to open up things in this offense. I think it would really, really help us out. I think we should prioritize, like I said, re-signing our you know, hometown guys, our guys that we've had in our system for a while. But after that, if we do have some leftover money, let's go ahead and spend it on a receiver this offseason, maybe even some other holes. And I will talk about that in another video, some other holes that I think Washington should prioritize you know, filling this offseason. So thank you guys for watching the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please hit that like button, subscribe if you guys are new, and turn on those notifications so you never miss a video. Peace.